Now all of this rain is starting to impact critical systems. New tonight, raw sewage flowing into Clam Bayou. It happened last August and is happening now. St. Pete Mayor Rick Kreisman is dodging questions about what's going on. Dan Investigates, Mike Deason, who first uncovered the sewage dump last year, is here with a story that you'll see only on 10. Mike? Well, Reg and Dion, you may recall last August, after we discovered the city was dumping raw sewage into Clam Bayou in Gulfport, the mayor promised it would never happen again. And that could be why he is reluctant to admit what his own public works director told us about this environmental problem. You're looking at raw sewage from St. Petersburg overflowing from the manholes in the area around Clam Bayou in Gulfport. Is there any raw sewage that's going into Clam Bayou? There appears to have been some that went in right over there. Claude Tankersley is St. Petersburg's new public works director. Before you were here, the mayor said that we wouldn't have raw sewage going into Clam Bayou. We had an extremely unusual event that happened yesterday. But despite the fact the area around the bayou is being roped off and signs are warning the surface is contaminated, St. Petersburg Mayor Rick Kreisman had nothing to say to upset people in Gulfport. Uh, upset in Gulfport about? The raw sewage in uh, Clam Bayou. Well, there isn't, uh, my understanding is that's not an issue this, for this, this, this go round. And then the mayor's staff stepped in. Okay, that's not what he said. That's, that's exactly. Wait, that's wait a second. Kevin, uh, Kevin, let me ask. Get, get that's a not, quick that's, comment. That's right not now. what he hey, said. Wait, let me hey. get a quick comment from the mayor, Stupid and then. And, uh, <laughs> so you, your understanding is that there's there's not raw sewage going in. I think Claude answered the question. Claude answered. So we turned now, to Tankersley and, and asked him to repeat in, what he said in earshot of the mayor, and that there could be raw sewage in Clam Bayou. Did you not say that? Mike, Mike stop this baiting stuff. Uh, no, doing. I'm just asking you. Well, did you not we, we say? Are, we do, don't we already have the answer on tape? Why don't you just use that? Uh, so here we go. Did it get into the bayou? We know that it got into the canal right over there. So we assume it, from the canal, it may have gotten into the bayou. Sources in the water department say the problem each time last year in this is because the elimination of one of the water treatment plants. A few years ago, the city decided to go from four to three in order to save millions of dollars. Raw sewage spilling into a bayou and the outrage is spreading. Why local officials refuse to back the mayor. 10 News at 6 starts right now. Good evening, everyone. I'm Reginald Roundtree. And I'm Dion Lim. Right away, the outrage continues tonight over the way the city of St. Pete handled the situation. The city's water treatment plants could not handle all the sewage following the rain dumped by Tropical Storm Colin. That, in turn, resulted in a system overload and sewage coming out of the manhole. Dan Investigates Mike Deason first broke this story for you last night. He joins us now in the newsroom. And, Mikey, I understand some elected officials are pretty upset tonight. That's true, Dion. Officials in both St. Petersburg and Gulfport, where Clam Bayou is located, say the situation wasn't handled well. While Tuesday's problem was mechanical and not as onerous as last August when St. Pete dumped the sewage into the bayou, many are not happy. The discharge of St. Petersburg raw sewage from a manhole in the Clam Bayou is causing a major stink in the city of Gulfport. They said that never again will they discharge into Clam Bayou. Gulfport City Council member Yolanda Roman is irate that St. Petersburg Mayor Rick Kreisman denies what his public works director admits raw sewage was discharged. My understanding is that's not an issue this for this this, this go round. Is there any raw sewage that's going into Clam Bayou? There appears to have been some that went in right over there. And Roman is also irritated St. Pete officials didn't contact Gulfport. Do I sound a little angry? Perhaps. Because I should not find out about what happened yesterday in the city of Gulfport through your news crew. That was how I find out. But St. Pete City Council member Carl Nurse says there seems to be some sort of reluctance by the mayor and his administration to be honest with the public, whether it comes to the problems here at Clam Bayou or the fix necessary for the aging and inadequate sewer system. I think, I think the public can see the truth and, we, and, and can handle the truth. Nurse says the city needs to spend $100 million to fix the system, and he believes the $6 million from the BP oil settlement is better spent on sewers than the mayor's feel-good projects. The sewer system cries out that we have to get started in a, in a, in a bigger way fast. 
Many in Gulfport agree. This is the first storm of 2016, a short term storm. And look what happened. Tell me what happens if we have a 10 day rain event. Now, in addition to the clam bayou problem, the city did dump thousands of partially treated sewage water gallons from the Albert Witted plant into the Tampa Bay. But do remember they did have a permit allowing something like this in an emergency, the type of emergency the city experienced this week. Sewage release after sewage released into the bay is St. Petersburg equipped to handle a storm. One lawmaker calls out the city of St. Pete pushing for an investigation. Sewage in the water. Our 10 investigation continues into the spill into Clam Bayou. Tonight, officials are calling for action. Since Monday's storm, the city has dumped 12, 12 Olympic-sized swimming pools of partially treated sewage right into Tampa Bay. Now that's in addition to the raw sewage spilled into Clam Bayou. Now 10 investigates Mike Deason, who uncovered the spill, found out a state representative is calling for an investigation into St. Petersburg. Mike? Well, Reg in court, State Representative Kathleen Peters is suspicious that St. Petersburg has not kept up with the growth in the area and that not enough has been done to expand the sewer system in St. Pete. Peters believes the DEP investigation will show because of the lack of sewer facility and water treatment expansion, the problems this week and the past years were inevitable. 57,000 gallons of raw sewage in Clam Bayou. Eight and a half million gallons of partially treated sewage dumped into Tampa Bay. 15 million gallons of raw sewage dumped into Clam Bayou in August of 2015. That's why we're contacting the secretary, exactly why. Pinellas Representative Kathleen Peters says in this letter to DEP Secretary John Steverson, she's convinced St. Petersburg's perceived inaction on the issue has made for a potential environmental and health disaster. I have grave concerns that they have not expanded the infrastructure to meet the growth and development that's happened in Pinellas County. But the city is saying it was hit with an unusually heavy rain event in Collin and that the partially treated sewage coming out of the Albert Wooded treatment plant has much less what's called fecal chloroform than raw sewage does. And to put this in perspective, nine teaspoons of fecal coliform would close the city pool. And what the city of St. Petersburg is doing with the treated sewage is putting the equivalent of two one gallon jugs of human waste into this pool. And that's something most people would never dream of taking a dip in. It's kind of sad, but um, I'm sure hopefully it will, it will clear up. But for now, warning signs are along the waterfront. And St. Pete Council member Carl Nurse says the problem has been years in the making. They are, you know, a long string of administrations that has tried to kick the can down the road, but there's no more road left. You know, this is, this is the time where we have to face this music. Nurse says it will cost a minimum of $100 million and 10 years to fix the aging sewer treatment system. Meantime, the city of St. Petersburg didn't comment on the call for the investigation, saying only it has been in constant contact with the DEP. And it says if Peters can come up with a way to help fund the project in the legislature, they will be happy to try to improve the system. Letter arrived at St. Petersburg City Hall at 6.07 this morning. That letter is from a whistleblower who says they were there were warnings about flooding and sewage spills. Now, 10 Investigates Mike Deason has been looking at the whistleblower's claims and Mike, tell us all about it. Well, Reg, this 11 page letter and copies of the emails and other documents say the city was warned that sewage overflows would happen if it didn't follow the recommendations of a consultant before shutting down the Albert Wooded treatment plant. But it ignored the recommendations. The consultant said to avoid overflows, it was mandatory the capacity at the Southwest treatment plant be expanded by almost one third before the city closed Albert Wooded. But that expansion never happened. And the evidence indicates that they knew. That Former St. Petersburg Mayor Bill Foster points to the consultant study in 2014 that warned that the Witted plant could not be closed unless there was a massive expansion of the Southwest plant. However, the letter points out the city shut down Albert Witted without making recommended upgrades. They knew that if we had a high storm event that we were going to have these discharges 
and they elected to decommission it anyway. The whistleblower letter is from the chief plant operator at the Northwest Treatment Plant. He was on the job all day and we couldn't reach him for comment. But his letter states public safety and the environment could possibly be in danger due to the sewage spills. I think people also wanted to, uh, uh, were really excited about having waterfront acres downtown and so excited that they led right into this, this, this uh, sewage crisis. Council member Steve Cornell opposed closing the plant. He says the city blew it. And he adds the mayor is not being candid by saying the sewage dumped into the bay is clean. So we're using some terms and saying it's almost reclaimed, it's reclaimed, that when you look at the DEP standards, they don't match. Um, and that's a real problem for me. The city should not be in the business of being vague and misleading people. Meantime, Foster rejects the administration's argument that the rains this summer were the perfect storm for a disaster. They haven't had a perfect storm yet. Baker had three hurricanes. I had high water events in 2012, 2013, which led us to know that you can't decommission Witted until you expand and, and, and complete Southwest. So they did it anyway. Now, a city spokesman says because this is a whistleblower letter, the city can't comment. Meantime, the Florida Department of Regulations is preparing a consent order to try to force the city to correct the problem. That should be done early next week. Bombshell developments in the St. Petersburg sewage crisis. Two top water officials are suspended. The governor has ordered a DEP investigation and sources are telling 10 Investigates Mike Deason there could be a criminal investigation. Mike is here to bring us up to speed. Mike? Well, Reg, you may recall we first told you about this consultant report last Friday. It holds a major key to the sewage crisis and is the reason St. Petersburg Mayor Rick Kreisman suspended the two top officials today. The two were apparently aware that the consultant report said don't close Albert Witted treatment plant until the treatment capacity was expanded elsewhere. And St. Pete Mayor Rick Kreisman maintains he was never informed. The consultant says the sewage dumps and spills likely never would have happened if the Witted plant closure had been delayed. 10 Investigates has obtained paperwork showing Engineering and Capital Improvements Director Thomas Gibson and Water Resources Director Steve Levitt were aware of the report. That's why the mayor suspended them today. However, state rep Kathleen Peters says that does not absolve the mayor. And the bottom line is the buck stops at the leadership. You know, you can blame all kinds of things, but you've got to take ownership. He needs to apologize to the citizens and he needs to take ownership. He's the administrator of that city and he should know what's going on. We tried contacting the two water officials. Gibson wasn't home and his wife angrily said not to come back. Levitt didn't answer the several calls we made to his office and home. Meantime, U.S. Congressman David Jolly is offering protection for any more Water Department whistleblowers that come forth like Craven Askew. He says the Fed should step in. This certainly rises to the level of an EPA investigation in terms of the environmental impact, but likely an investigation that goes much beyond that as well. And while Jolly hints at a criminal investigation, sources say Florida Fish and Wildlife is taking a hard look at sewage dumping and spills to see if laws were broken. Meantime, Peters says she expects the investigation the governor ordered could dig up more answers. They're going to dig a little bit deeper into this, um, and I think they're prepared to dig as far as they possibly can. Now, I tried to talk with Mayor Kreisman today. His office told me he was unavailable for comment today, but he is planning to address the issue Thursday afternoon at the city council meeting. Meantime, the mayor's spokesman, Ben Kirby, issued a statement saying the DEP investigation is politically motivated. It's change, a change at St. Petersburg City Hall, and the change is at the top. Not in personnel, but in message. St. Pete Mayor Rick Kreisman is talking one on one with 10 Investigates Mike Deason. Mike has asked questions before, but tonight Kreisman is talking openly and talking candidly, mostly about the hottest issue facing the city and his administration. This has been horrible. St. Petersburg Mayor Rick Kreisman is talking about the sewage spills and dumping in Tampa Bay, a serious problem that has dogged his administration for more than a year. I'll be the first one to say I've, uh, I haven't slept so badly during my entire time of mayor as I have since this has all happened. 
Kreisman has had a contentious relationship at times with multiple outlets that have reported critical stories. Ten Investigates has reported several stories that weren't flattering to the mayor, and Kreisman admits he hasn't handled the situation well, but he vows to change. I made mistakes. We, we did some things very poorly. I mean, our, our inter interchange down at Clam Bayou, people point to that all the time. As yeah, and, and again, it was, that's, that's, I can't allow being frustrated to interfere with how I'm communicating. You must know that there's some people who said you were thin-skinned as mayor and didn't take criticism very well, and certainly you got plenty from me. Yeah, I, I mean, I think, and, and I can understand why people would say that. I, I think I was, and maybe I, you know, I let my frustrations get the better of me. I was frustrated by the whole situation. The mayor is talking about top city water officials hiding this 2014 consultant report. This report warned the city that shutting down the Albert Wooded sewage treatment plant without adding new treatment capacity would lead to a sewage crisis that the city is facing now. That report, which says there could be an issue if you shut it down, was never shared with us. But sharing blame for the current sewage crisis with former mayors Rick Baker and Bill Foster is something that both Baker and Foster say is unfair. They said to me, I just wish you'd say, I'm taking all the responsibility. Well, I'm, I'm the guy sitting in the seat. They're not sitting here any longer. So I'm the one who has to deal with it. And taking responsibility? Yeah, we, we, you know, we've said uh, we got to deal with this situation. We're responsible for what happens in this city. At the DEP meeting a couple of weeks ago, George Kritikos from Clearwater, the first thing he said was, I want to apologize. I haven't heard that. Yeah, well, we do. I mean, we, we, we apologize for our lack of communication. Uh, for the way we communicated, not being as clear on things. And as the mayor tries to plug this sewage leak, he seems to have a changed attitude in dealing with the public, city council, as well as the media. Is it a real epiphany or the fact that he's up for re-election next year? I think too many politicians are, their main concern is getting re-elected instead of doing their job. So now the true test of whether the mayor is doing a good job and has really changed will be the next time there's an issue in the city and how Mayor Kreisman handles it.